Hello, this is Assistant Professor Vishnu Shankar from Department of Mechanical Engineering, Rajgiri School of Engineering and Technology, Kakkanad. Welcome to the course on Basics of Mechanical Engineering, which is offered to the first year B.Tech students of APJ Abdul Karam Kerala Technological University. On behalf of Rajgiri School of Engineering and Technology and Department of Mechanical Engineering, it gives me great pleasure to present this course to you. You are not alone in this course. You are part of a group of students who are taking this course online. So study well and enjoy the online course experience. Hello everyone. As a part of the online lecture series, today I will be discussing the topic basics of thermodynamics in my lecture one. I have referred textbook on engineering thermodynamics by P.K. Nag while preparing this lecture. Now, what is thermodynamics? Thermodynamics is a branch of science that deals with energy and its various forms. The name thermodynamics was derived from the Greek word therm means heat and dynamics means motion or power. Thermodynamics deals with the relationship among heat, work and properties of system which are in equilibrium with one another. Nicolas Leonard Sadi Carnot was known as the father of thermodynamics. Now, what are the applications of thermodynamics? Thermodynamics is basically used in refrigeration systems, air conditioning systems, in automobiles, power plants, etc. So thermodynamics can be considered as the science of three E's, that is energy, entropy and equilibrium. The study of thermodynamics is classified based on the behavior of matter into two. They are macroscopic approach and microscopic approach. What is macroscopic approach? Macroscopic approach or classical thermodynamics deals with properties of system as a whole. Whereas in microscopic approach or statistical thermodynamics, we study the properties of each and every molecule. Now we will be studying the basic terminologies that are used in thermodynamics. They are system, surrounding and boundary. A system is defined as a quantity of matter or a region in space chosen for study. The mass or region outside the system is called the surrounding. The real or imaginary surface that separates the system from its surroundings is called the boundary. The system is classified into three. They are closed system, open system and isolated system. As already I have mentioned, the thermodynamic system is classified into three. They are open system, closed system and isolated system. Now, what is an open system? We call a system as an open system when there is transfer of both mass as well as energy between the system and the surrounding. An example for open system is boiling of water in a container which is open to the surrounding. Now, what is a closed system? A closed system is a system where there is transfer of only energy and no mass transfer takes place between the system and the surrounding. An example for closed system is a closed vessel and the third type of system is the isolated system. An isolated system is defined as a system where there is no transfer of mass as well as energy. A perfect example for isolated system is the thermos flask. State of a system. The condition of physical existence of a system at any instant is called its state. 
the state of thermodynamic system is described by specifying its thermodynamic coordinates or properties such as pressure, temperature, volume, density, etc. Properties of a system Characteristics of a system by which its physical condition may be described are called the properties of a system. These are macroscopic in nature and physically measurable. Some of the examples of properties or characteristics are pressure, volume, temperature, etc. When all the properties of a system have a definite value, the system is said to exist at a definite state. Based on the dependency on mass, a property of a system is classified into two. They are intensity properties and extensive properties. Intensity properties are those properties which are independent of size or mass of a system. Some of the examples of intensity properties are pressure, temperature, density, etc. And extensive properties are properties which are size dependent or dependent on mass. Some of the examples of extensive properties are volume, area, energy, etc. When can we call a system to be in thermodynamic equilibrium? We can call a system to be in thermodynamic equilibrium or state of balance when it is in thermal equilibrium, mechanical equilibrium and chemical equilibrium at the same time. What is thermal equilibrium? When the temperature remains constant, then we can say that a system is in thermal equilibrium. What is mechanical equilibrium? When the pressure remains constant or the net forces acting on a system is equal to zero, then we call a system to be in mechanical equilibrium. What is chemical equilibrium? When the chemical chem composition remains constant or there is no chemical reaction occurring, then we call a system to be in chemical equilibrium. Process Any property of a system changes its value there is a change in state and the system is said to undergo a process. The process is basically classified into two. They are reversible or ideal process and irreversible process. We call a process to be reversible when a process occurring from 1 to 2 can be taken back from 2 to 1 without any change in the surroundings. And a process is called an irreversible process when the process occurring from 1 to 2 cannot be taken back from 2 to 1 along the same path. Quasi-static process Quasi means almost and static means stationary or in equilibrium. A process carried out in such a way that at every instant the deviation of the system from thermodynamic equilibrium is very small then we call such a process as a quasi-static process. I will be explaining the quasi-static process using a piston cylinder arrangement. As you can see, a pressurized gas is kept inside a piston cylinder arrangement at a pressure P1, volume B1 and temperature T1. There are piston, cylinder, and small pieces of weights are kept on top of the piston in order to balance the pressure and two stoppers are also attached at the top of the cylinder. Now I will be explaining the quasi-static process. In this piston cylinder arrangement if small pieces of weights are removed one by one slowly then the deviation from each stage will be infinitesimally small or it can be considered as the two states to exist at equilibrium states. The series of such equilibrium states will form a quasi-static process. That is, in this case, it is represented as process 1 to 2. Now, 
I will be explaining about non-quasi static process. If we remove the small pieces of weights one by one, suddenly then the deviation will be abrupt and such a process is called a non-quasi static process since the states attained in each and every point will not be in path and point functions. Path functions. Their magnitudes depend on the path followed during a process as well as at the end states. Examples for path functions are heat and work. Point function or state functions are those which depend on the state only and not on how a system reaches that state. That is, it is independent upon the path of the system. Example for point function or state function is properties. That is, all properties can be considered as point or state functions. Thermodynamic cycle. A thermodynamic cycle consists of a series of change of state such that final state is same as the initial state. As you can see in the animation, the process 1, 2 and 3 together constitutes a thermodynamic cycle since the initial point and the final point is same. Different forms of energy. The energy that a system possesses as a result of its elevation in a gravitational field is called potential energy and is expressed as Pe equal to mgz where g is the gravitational acceleration and z is the elevation of the center of gravity of a system related to some arbitrarily selected reference level. The energy that a system possesses as a result of its motion related to some reference frame is called kinetic energy. When all parts of a system move with the same velocity, the kinetic energy is expressed as Ke equal to half mv square. The microscopic forms of energy are those related to the molecular structure of a system and the degree of the molecular activity and they are independent of outside reference frames. The sum of all the microscopic forms of energy is called the internal energy of a system and is denoted by U. The magnetic, electric and surface tension effects are significant in some specialized cases only and are usually ignored. In the absence of such effects, the total energy of a system consists of the kinetic, potential and internal energies and is expressed as capital E which is the total energy will be equal to U internal energy plus Ke kinetic energy plus Pe potential energy which is expressed as equal to U plus half mv square plus mg is that internal energy U. It is the sum of internal kinetic energy and internal potential energy of its molecules. Path independent and depends only on temperature of an ideal gas. So internal can energy can be called as the energy of constituent particles. Basically it will be the summation of translational energy, rotational energy and vibrational energy. Heat the energy transfer across the boundary of a system on account of the temperature difference between the system and the surroundings is called heat. It is the energy in transit. We call heat as energy in transit because heat is identified at the boundary separating the system from the surrounding. Specific heat. The amount of heat required to raise the temperature of unit mass of a substance by unit degree is called the specific heat. Specific heat is classified into two, specific heat at constant pressure and specific heat at constant volume. Specific heat at constant pressure, Cp. The amount of heat 
required to raise the temperature of unit mass of a gas through unit degree when it is heated at constant pressure. The formula for specific heat at constant pressure Cp is given by Cp equal to Q divided by M into T2 minus T1 where Q is the total heat transfer, M is the mass and T2 minus T1 is the temperature difference. Specific heat at constant volume Cv. The amount of heat required to raise the temperature of unit mass of a gas through unit degree when it is heated at constant volume is called specific heat at constant volume Cv. The formula for Cv is given by Cv equal to Q divided by M into T2 minus T1 where Q is the total heat transfer, M is the mass of gas and T2 minus T1 is the temperature difference. For air, Cp is taken as 1.005 kJ per kilogram Kelvin and Cv for air is taken as 0.718 kJ per kilogram Kelvin. Work The energy transfer across the boundary of a system on account of reasons other than temperature difference is called work. The two requirements for work are a force acting on the boundary should be there and the boundary must move in the direction of application of the force. Consider a piston cylinder arrangement in which the process occurs from 1 to 2 which is expansion. The pressure acting on the top of the piston is assumed as P and the change in volume from state 1 to 2 is assumed as V1 to V2. Then the work done is given as W equal to integral 1 to 2 P dV. The assumptions are the system should be closed and the process should be quasi static. Some of the additional comments on heat and work transfer. Basically while using heat and work in thermodynamic problems, a sign convention should be followed. The heat transfer to a system is taken as positive because in this case heat is absorbed by the system or heat is gained by the system. The heat transfer from a system is taken as negative because in this case the heat is lost by the system. The work transfer to a system is taken as negative because the work is done on the system or in this case it is compression. Whereas work transfer from a system is taken as positive since the work is done by the system or the process is expansion. Coming to the end of the session, I would like to brief on the topics which were covered in this session. I think you must have understood what is thermodynamics, the applications of thermodynamics, various terminologies which are used in thermodynamics, the classification of systems, what is thermodynamic equilibrium, what is quasi-static process and different forms of energy such as heat and work. You must have understood the sign conventions which should be followed while applying heat and work in thermodynamic problems. Hopefully you enjoyed the lecture and see you soon with the second lecture on laws of thermodynamics.